then continue with our class uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah, um, and we start with um, Sefer Shemras Halashon, and uh, the topic is the most neglected. Okay, let's see. Above, um, <clears throat> above we refer to Shemras Halashon as a Meis Mitzvah, right? So we said the uh, Meis Mitzvah is a, a corpse. There is um, nobody like. Uh, Nobody tending to, so like it's some lying around somewhere in open. A mitzvah which is um, woefully ignored, woefully ignored by many uh, who do not reckon it as a mitzvah at all. Though this needs uh, no proof, we will nevertheless demonstrate that it is true. So we did uh, not not the last time, that uh, time before that. We explained this this um, mace mitzvah, same as the corpse that uh, no nobody is burying. So same this mitzvah that nobody is doing, right? So that's uh, that's the connection. So it says there are people who find nothing wrong with saying the most derogatory remarks about others for no good reason. So it's not like uh, they they derive any I don't know benefit like uh, I don't know like uh, talk, talking about competition. Let's say maybe. They, they, in their mind, they, they drive any benefit, just the right people. When asked why do we speak Loshan Hara, they respond with a dozen reasons as to why their words are not Loshan Hara at all. If the questionnaire uh, then responds with uh, irrefutable proof that indeed the statement uh, voice to voice do constitute Loshan Hara, they respond well, it is not Loshan Hara when it says about so and so, it is a mitzvah to speak about him, right? So it's very interesting. So people uh, usually people do not learn, or they say that they do, but actually they don't. Go into details of all of these halachas, right? Uh, so as we see, it's day number one hundred and seventy, one hundred and seventy. So and it's two pages. Right, uh, so it's 300, well, 40, 40, 40 days, 40 classes, right? So we, we, we've been learning this, and it's still every day it's new material. Every day is uh, is a new situation. Like uh, like we, we look at the, the different perspective. So a person who does not learn uh, this lashon, shmiras uh, lashon, laws and details, he has no idea. But nevertheless, they say, no, it's not Loshan Ha. Then you prove, no, no, it is Loshan Ha. It's a negative speech about uh, you, your fellow Jew. How is, it, how is it allowed? He says, okay, okay, it's Loshan Ha, but you, I'm allowed to, to talk about him because, why? Because he is uh, not such a good person, because he cheated, he cheated you. Like, how do you know? And all, all these things, right? So now they get personal. The more one tries to convince them that they err, the more they heap uh, um, calumny upon the subject uh, of their ill-spoken words. So basically, people do not want to, to acknowledge whatever they, they say is wrong. Okay. Does this happen with other sins? Does, uh, does an otherwise observant Jew who has been caught eating uh, something forbidden respond to his uh, reproval by grabbing other piece of the food and stuffing it into his own mouth? Certainly not. Why then does the, this occur with the sin of Loshan Hara, which as we have shown uh, in the previous chapters, is among the worst sins of the Torah? So that's a very good question. So an in, in amazing example. So if you, if, one, if we catch another Jew, uh, let's say this uh, eating non-kosher, uh, but but he's going to acknowledge. He's not going to say no. It's not no. It is kosher. He, he sits in McDonald's, right? So he said no, no. It's actually kosher. You don't know, and uh, they have a different menu, and uh, that's no, no. It's kosher. He's not going to say that, right? Uh, he he would acknowledge and, and unless I mean I don't know what he's going to say, but uh, but at least he's not would be like as uh, as defensive as uh, in the case of Shmiras Halashon. And on and as we said before many times, our sages teach us that uh, a sin of Loshan Hara is like all other sin sins of the Torah combined, not only equivalent to some like all of the sins combined. Right? That's how bad it is. The answer is that um, this very serious matter 
uh, has uh, become Hefker, disregarded, disregarded, and uh, trampled upon by many. So it's very interesting. Okay, uh, we speak not only of habitual gossipers. There are many people who are not given uh, not, not given to gossip, yet do not consider Loshan Haram as serious, uh, serious of the most other sins. Therefore, they turn deaf ear uh, when told or refrain, uh, refrain from speaking the forbidden. There is no great mace mitzvah in our time. So, okay. So, they say, what, what is the problem? The, the answer is uh, that this uh, mitzvah become a hefker. Hefker is like, uh, it's nobody's. No, nobody wants to, to claim ownership, right? Uh, everybody says, no, no, it's, it's not mine. Right? And trample upon uh, by, by many. So, people do not consider it... Uh, uh, very important when uh, when when they when we speak. But if you ask them, they, like, uh, is, is it nice to say Loshan Hara or somebody spoke bad about you? Is it, do you think this good? He was absolutely not. This guy and his low life and this and that. Right? Even though they uh, themselves habitual speakers of Loshan Hara. Right? Okay. Therefore, they turn and a plus and plus if if people would not. Let's say they're not gossipers themselves; they would uh, turn deaf ear. So, meaning what? They were not, not going to protest. So many times, as we said uh, uh, in previous classes, you, you have to protest. Say, I am not going to listen. I am, why are you telling me that? I'm not interested. Not interested. Stop. Or just uh, if, if you cannot stop with the conversation, just turn around and leave. Okay. That's why he said um, there is no greater mace mitzvah in, of our time. Okay, stop here. Okay, so, so we continue with Hilchas uh, Talmud uh, Torah. And uh, we're in chapter 5, and we start with, uh, we're going to start today with Halacha 6. So this chapter, at least, I'm not sure, I don't remember all of the uh, chapter. Yes, no, no. It's actually all uh, all of this chapter. It deals with respect to to one's uh, primary teacher, right? How how he should uh, show him respect. Okay. So number six. So let's read with our commentary. and then go back and add explanations. Similarly, he should not remove his tefillin in the presence of his teacher, nor should he recline in a, in his presence. Rather, he should sit before him. As one seat before the uh, before a king, a person should not pray either in front of his teacher, behind his uh, teacher, or at his, his teacher's side. Needless to say, one should not walk by by his side. Rather, he should distance himself behind his teacher without uh, standing directly behind him, or and, and then pray. Okay. One should not enter a bathhouse together with his teacher or sit in his teacher's place. He should not sit um, side against his teacher's opinion in his presence or contradict his statements. One should not sit in his presence until he tells him to sit. One should not stand before him until he tells him to stand or until he receives permission to stand. When one departs from his teacher, one should not turn his back to him. Rather, one should walk backwards while facing him. Um, so we're going to explain, of course, there is, as you see, there's a lot of uh, information and many of the things we, we, we're going to comment. Actually, it's, it's not only to, to his teacher, but all, 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 uh, also to the parents. The same laws apply, respect to the parents. And uh, also the same uh, laws apply in a synagogue, how you behave you say, in a synagogue. Okay, so let's see, number six. From the beginning with commentaries and explanations. <clears throat> Similarly, he should not remove his tefillin in the presence of his teacher. Okay, so let's see. Rav um, David Arameach notes that this law is found in, uh, in a sh shimush, Shimusha Rava. Okay, so it's some kind of, uh, I guess, um, medrash. His version of the text lead, uh, leads him to the interpretation before rather than in the presence. Okay. There is first the teacher should remove his tefillin and then the students. However, the um, 
Shiboke Chaleket. And others renders, uh, renders the Shemusha Rabba uh, as translated here. The case of Mishnah cites Sanhedrin 101b, which holds the removing one's tefillin in the presence of a king. Mm -hmm. Forbids, for, forbids removing the king, since in um, Hariot 13a relates that the Torah scholar is more deserving honor than a king. There are those who uh, quote his uh, source as uh, for our halach. Okay, so it's a long explanation. So what we can learn from here. So in front of our teacher, we're not allowed. Um, it says in the presence. No, it's not. It says in front. In the presence of our teacher, you're not allowed to remove tefillin. Okay. So meaning what? Like you would. Uh, um, in, in some sense, right, when, when you have your, your tefillin on, right, so it's uh, in some sense like you uh, you remove the, the, the presence of the Shekhinah, so that that's a tefillin on the head, it's like direct con connection to the Shekhinah in front of your teacher, right, and uh, maybe if, he, if, if you go to another room, you would be allowed to, but not in front of him. And same, uh, I just want to draw the parallel, same is actually in a synagogue, um, it's not, uh, you, you cannot remove tefillin, uh, in front of the Sefer Torah. For example, on Monday and Thursday, we read Sefer Torah. Today? Yeah, no, no, today we didn't. Tomorrow we, we're going to read Bezras Hashem Sefer Torah. And uh, some, like uh, in the place where I pray, there are a few people, they need to, to, to leave early. They, they come early to the shul. They, they have to start uh, the day very early, the way I understand. Um, in a, maybe 7 30 even and they have to drive very long distance so they, they live early and uh, sometimes like in the middle of the Torah reading so uh, one 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 person like a uh, little humble right so he goes to the woman's section and that's where I remove his tefillin okay in the not in the presence of the Torah and they leap through the through the different exit but another clown he he removed like right in front of the safer Torah and uh, that's how he does. And that's very, very disrespect to the Sefer Torah. Right? Sefer Torah tells you to put on tefillin, and guess what? And you're removing uh, despite what it said. Okay, that's not good. Okay. So uh, one more time, you're not uh, allowed to, to... No, it says you... Similarly, he should not. It's not allowed. You should not remove uh, his tefillin in the presence of his teacher. So basically, if teacher gives you permission, so uh, teacher already removed his feeling, so yeah, you're allowed to remove feeling. I mean, they uh, they prepare for different activities, of course. Nor should he recline in his presence. Commentary: His he, uh, note he has some matzah, uh, of matzah, uh, which means that uh, this prohibition even on the seder night, when there is a mitzvah to recline. Okay, so what does it mean? So on uh, on Seder night in Pesach, we have a mitzvah when we drink uh, these uh, four cups of wine, and when we eat matzah, so we recline on uh, on the left side, right? Some have a pillow, some like uh, recline on the table, but uh, nobody sits straight, right? Oh, almost almost nobody, right? So and then it says if you do not recline. Uh, you have to repeat again. So if somebody eats matzah uh, without reclining, so if the person has to eat uh, uh, the same amount of matzah. So it's like uh, you have to eat a lot of matzah on that day. So it's very hard. It's not so, such an easy thing. So people uh, usually remind each other to, to recline, right? That's, uh, that's the requirement of the day. And even on this day, even though it's a requirement of the day, even though our sages said, if you did without reclining, you have to repeat, right? That's, uh, you understand how strict it is. Uh, even then, uh, it says that the students are not allowed to recline in the presence of their teacher. Why? Why? Because it, it is disrespect. But usually, of course, teachers are aware, rabbis are aware. Of course, he's going to give them permission. So if permission is given, there is no problem, right? But uh, without permission, he's not allowed to recline. Continue. Rather, he should sit before him as one sits before the king, right? So, like uh, the uh, the way. I mean, of course, you you're allowed to to sit in front of the king, but only if the king uh, tells you to sit, 
So if a uh, king does not uh, tell you to sit, you have to stand. Same, same is here. So and uh, as you, uh, as you saw by, from from the end of this halacha, so in 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 some sense we 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 must respect um, Torah scholar, uh, Torah scholar. I mean, you you your own rabbi even more that you 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 respect a king, right? And it's actually in Perkyovas if you watch uh, Rabbi Ruben Schlitter's uh, Serious Perkyovas, so he explained it beautifully. So why? Because um, uh, he said, uh, for, it says in Perkyovas that uh, the world were, was given three three crowns, right? W what is the crowns? One is the crown of, of the kingship, right? One of the uh, crowns of Kihuna, meaning to be a Kohen, right? Uh, priest, let's say Kohen. And, and the third uh, is a uh, uh, crown of the Torah. So first two, uh, first two crowns, uh, a person does not have to exhort themselves. It's like uh, they ju just because they 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 they're born in such a family, right? If uh, if he this person bo uh, was born in a family of the king, what is his uh, achievements? No, no, no achievements. What, what, what is his merits? There is no merits. He was just born like this uh, in this family. That's it. So he's the next king, right? So there are not too many merits, right? Uh, or a or a Kohen, right? He was born from a father. Who is Kohen? He's Kohen. But in, in order to get the the crown of the Torah, so anybody can get the crown of the Torah, you have to uh, you have to work on it very very hard. So in this sense, this person uh, deserves this crown, and we respect him because of his Torah knowledge, because of his dedication of the Torah. Right? We don't respect. Rabbis, because he uh, has uh, I don't know, a nice beard, or, or he can speak uh, well, or his suit, beautiful suit, right? We don't. We respect Torah scholars, rabbi, or even different Torah scholars, because why? Because the Torah that they possess, and the only um, the only option to, to possess a Torah, uh, Torah right, is uh, working hard, and Hashem has to grant it to you. So there are many people that learn many years, and you ask him to, okay, so explain one halacha. For example, this halacha would not be able to explain. I know they, they read uh, many books. You come to, to their house, like uh, full of books, but cannot explain. I don't know why. I, I mean, I know why, but it's a different story. Okay, so continue. Rather he should, uh, so one more time, rather he should... Uh, uh, before him, should sit before him as they sit before the king. So meaning uh, uh, very, very respectful. Okay, because as mentioned in Harayas, um, same place, a Torah scholar deserves greater honor, right? even than the king. Continue. A person should not uh, pray either in front of his teacher Behind the teacher or on the side of the teacher. So basically, where where a poor person has to pray, there is no place, right? So let's see. It's not uh, it's not what it seems. So commentary says, um, first commentary in front of his teacher, standing with his back to one's teacher is a mark of great disrespect, right? So when you turn to uh, like uh, it says in this expression, give somebody cold shoulder, right? So you, you return back to him. So meaning what? That uh, you show him disrespect. Meaning that, that you don't have, you don't want to, to have anything to do with that person, right? Hence, it is forbidden as long as one can uh, can be seen by one's teacher. Okay. So maybe if a uh, teacher decided to 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 sit like in in the middle of the room. So I mean. Uh, and all around is his uh, students, so it's it's very hard, as you understand, like uh, like uh, <laughs> not to pray in front of him. So many times, uh, rabbi is like a Rosh Hashiva, right? A person of this statue would pray in in the, in front. Okay, so in front there is no problem. Okay, continue. So it's uh, behind him, behind like uh, no, in front of him, meaning that that's. Disrespect, it's understandable. If he's back to his teacher. Behind his teacher or on his teacher's side? Question? Yes, yes. I'm yes. sorry, Rob. Yes, go ahead. Um, so, in a situation like that, um, if you ask 
your teacher if it's okay? Is that, is that okay? No, no, no. Um, ask him. And, mm -hmm. No, in, in no. front, in front, I, I don't think it's ever okay. I don't think. You see, with, uh, when we say it's a, it's a very good question that, that you ask. So I would say that the situation like, like this would be in yeshiva somewhere, right? When all of the students or all of the people that pray in that uh, synagogue in that room are his students. So usually, usually this person knows, like, of course he knows. If we know, he knows, right? So he goes to, to the front. So everybody, at least on the back. So, I mean, we, we, we're going to, to see on, on the back or on the sides or opposite. He is actually facing everybody. So he, he, he sits uh, with his face to the, to, the, to the congregation. But in other synagogues, right, uh, like, if, for example, in a place where I pray, there are different rabbis come, like, uh, but they're not my teacher. I'm like, I'm, I, I, I know that their names and stuff like that, but uh, there is no problem since uh, we, we, we're not on the same level. Uh, I, I'm not their teacher and they're not my students and uh, I'm, I'm not their student, so there, there is no problem whatsoever. So this pertains more, I would say, to the to the yeshiva. When uh, all of these uh, people in the room are his students. You understand? But uh, to, to ask him, I mean, <laughs> he should have known better. You, know, you understand? So you're not you, you asking, could, could, could you move in front a little? I want to stay behind. Can I stay? But, but, but back to, to that person, for sure, not good. Even though he might allow you because of his humility, but uh, it's not good. You understand? So um, I. On another hand, if I remember correctly, so uh, I think Stipler go on and uh, his son Rav Kanievsky. I don't, I don't think they they prayed in a, like. At least Stipler, I think he was uh, sitting by the bima when they read the Torah, so it's like in the middle of the room. I think so. I think so. Right. Uh, so probably not not everybody were the, the students. So like people were were, were able. To stand in front of them if not uh, not uh, their students but a good question okay so let's see but uh, of, of course we, we have to pr proceed with with, uh, um, <laughs> with a commentary because otherwise if, if you say in front is uh, is not allowed it's understandable on the sides is not allowed and the back is not allowed so what do you want me to where, where, where exactly you want me to, to pray in the roof Right, so that's let's see. So in front of this teacher, his teacher, we just commented behind teacher or at the teacher's side. Sixty-one. Let's see. Rashi in uh, Talmud Bracha six, uh, twenty-seven a explained that doing so would be expression of pride, implying the degree of um, equivalence to his teacher. The Shulchan Aruch. Uh, meaning on the, on the teacher's side, right? On the teacher's side. That's uh, okay. So we mean on the teacher's side. So so we're, we're equal. The Shulchan Aruch in Yorek uh, Deya two forty two forty two sixteen states that uh, there is no prohibition if one stands more than four cubits away from his teacher. The Beit Yosef also states. That this restriction apply only when praying as an individuals, and not when participating in communal prayer. Okay, so as as we uh, as as we suspected, it should be some kind of resolution. Otherwise, how can you enter and pray in the same room with your teacher? So here's the resolution. Let us let, just summarize. So first, um, first uh, we say that it does not apply beyond the four cubits. Four cubits, we said it's approximately, what is it, eight feet, less than eight feet, and if you go by meters, is less than two meters, a little less. I'm not sure how much less, maybe 180 or something, I don't know, but plus minus, right? Uh, so meaning what? We said this four cubits, this four cubits is our private domain, right? And um, 
So uh, according to this opinion, or according to the Shulchanor, it says, so if you're not that close to him, so you're not in his domain, first of all. And second of all, uh, second, uh, second leniency, I would say, right, the base Yosef, say that um, does not apply when, um, uh, this restriction apply only prayers in individuals, but not participate in communal prayer. So meaning in communal prayer, uh, there is no problem. When when would person praise in, as individual? Mm, I guess if there is no minion, would be praying as individual. But uh, what should you do in this uh, case? I'm not sure. So let's say. So here's a practical example. There is only eight people, right? There is no minion. You need uh, ten to have a minion. There are only eight people. So. Are you not allowed to stay on, on, on the left, on the right, on the back, in the front of his teacher? I guess in this case, uh, I mean, he should, uh, in some sense, forgo his honor and allow people at least uh, stay uh, in the back of him, right? Even as individuals. So in this case, it's uh, even even though there are eight of us, right? Eight people, eight eight, uh, eight males. Uh, in a room, right? So it's still called individual prayer. Just so you know. Unless we have 10, 10 men, it's all individual prayer. Okay. 61. Continue. Needless to say, one should not walk by his side. So it's like friends walk over by each other's side. So commentary, Yoma 27a states, a person who walks at his teacher right is boor. <laughs> so Bur is not uh, uh, it's uh, opposite to the compliment right he's a uh, uh, Bur a person who does not have any manners like a very bullish person okay okay continue 62 compare okay, continue rather he should distance himself behind his teacher without standing directly behind him um, him and, and then and then pray okay uh, so just one second. Uh, so so he's uh, he's switching the topic. First topic is was like, it's not switching. It's like the statements. First first statements. You should not uh, walk at the uh, rabbi's mm -hmm. side. How how you should walk a, a little behind and to the side, behind to the side. Rather in the next one, rather he should uh, distance himself behind the teacher without standing directly behind him. And then pray. Okay, then you can pray. 63. Uh, standing slightly to the side or uh, to his side or slightly behind him. Okay. Continue. One should not enter a bathhouse together with his teacher. 64. For it is not respectful to, uh, to be together with, his, uh, uh, with him while naked. However, if the teacher needs his assistance, it is permitted. And Rambam stated in Hilchas Yisudei Bia 21.16. So, and uh, there, um, the, there is actually, I, I don't know, maybe in that halacha, so it says uh, actually the list of the individuals that you are not allowed to go, I, I'm talking about men, uh, to go to, uh, to, go, uh, to go with, uh, into bathhouse, right? So in olden days, there were public bathhouses, so people would go together. Right, to base, and uh, so you're not allowed to go with your father, right, uh, with your older brother, I think, with uh, your father-in-law, with your brother-in-law, of course, with your teacher. So the thing is, so explanation logic is, it's very simple. So uh, you, let's say you, you see that per person naked, and you, you see whatever you see, and you, you're going to respect him less because of that. Okay, so, I mean, he, he's such a tough with all of his uh, suit and this and that hat, now he does not uh, does not have suit, and you see that he's uh, just a feeble individual, right? Like, uh, compared to you, who goes to gym seven times a day, you, you understand? So, so in this case, a person might uh, lose uh, uh, respect. And that's uh, that's why Torah said, don't do it. Continue. Okay, so one, one more time, but, uh, but uh, as, as a commentary says, so if a teacher needs needs assistance, so if it's elderly, he needs uh, uh, help uh, to, to dress, undress, 
like to to wash his back and like uh, try all, all, all the others is especially in the olden days it was not like today you open the uh, the faucets and you have a hot uh, water cold water so in olden days you would have to take your bucket and go and get hot water mixed with cold water you have to spill on yourself it was a big process so um, it was uh, very convenient to go with the assistant especially for elderly elderly person yes go ahead yes uh, so what do you do in a situation i had an um i had an uncle or my wife had an uncle he was uh he was ready to go and uh he was at the point where he could not um take himself to the to the uh, to the restroom mm -hmm. um so myself and, and another uh, member of the family had to go help him mm -hmm. uh just to take him so he could you know do his business mm -hmm. um now we just walked him in there and, and let him do his business and everything now is something like that allowed or yes yeah 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 that's or, that's uh that's what we said it's it's like uh he he, he needs our assistance that's it he cannot do it without us Right, so for for him, if he said no, uncle, I don't want to disrespect. No, he said, forget about respect. Just get, get, get me to, to the restroom. I, I I need to go. That's it. So in this case, of course, the, these people would forgo their respect and uh, what you think about them. Uh, if you see him naked, not naked, because it's uh, it's it's a different level of, of relationships. You understand? So it says still it's better. Um, not to take your parents for example so if you it says that if, if you have an option to pay somebody else to take care of uh, for example especially like your mother don't do it right um so it's better to pay somebody so let them take and you you do all other things right even say even though she said i don't mind so don't do it father also try not to do it but other other relatives there is no problem but if if there is nobody else and your father needs to go to the bathroom and there is nobody else and you cannot afford and he cannot afford help of course that's what you do absolutely 100 percent any other questions it's very it's very important question so any other questions or we continue okay so let's continue <clears throat> so in seconds where are we mm. 62 so we said if he needs our assistance there is no problem 64 okay so let's read the whole sentence um, from the beginning um, one should not enter the bathhouse together with his teacher so we just commented or sit in his uh, teacher's place okay so as uh, it, it's like he's taken over like uh, or like he's old like uh even it's the same same color has applied to to your father place and and your mother place right so okay okay if if you even even if you come to somebody else's house right and and uh the uh, and and they tell us okay see see that at the table we, we're going to to serve dinner in uh, i don't know in five minutes ten minutes so you must ask don't, don't sit where it's comfortable so you sit where, where can i see they say no no you sit wherever you want whatever he said no please tell me when is not uh, the the owner of the house the the, the balabai sit and not uh, not uh, not uh, this lady sit right the the lady of the house just tell me where where am i allowed to sit right that's a very important question to ask comment in. and this is um, the um and this is following the point taken from the statement kiddushim 31b regarding respect to due a father similar statement found uh hilchot mamrim 63 okay so meaning not to sit in a place of the, the uh, father of course if if you're a guest no, nobody take it as a fence but uh but in case of in, in a place of the father that's uh, very disrespectful so it's like a rebellious son or daughter one should not uh, side uh, against his teacher's opinion in his presence or contradict his statement okay so one more time one should not uh, side against uh, uh, his teacher's opinion commentary 
This translation based on Rambam definition of the uh, later expression in one of his responses. Other define favor of the teacher's opinion. Explaining that uh, doing so is a mark of disrespect because it's implied that the teacher needs the student's uh, support. That's, a, that's a, a very, very strong statement. So it's, a, it's actually uh, uh, trains also to, to, the, uh, to the respect of the parents. So one, one of the things, I mean, it happens to all of us if we have our parents around, right? <laughs> so you say, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, father, you're right. So when you say this, uh, yes, father, you're right, in disrespect to the father, or yes, mother, you're right. So like, it means that it entered your mind. So your father could, could be not right, or your mother, in some instances, not right. But this time, uh, he happened to be right. You say, and, and you, you agree. So, yeah, you understand? So, so same is here. Even to to confirm your teacher, um, even to favor your teacher opinion, right? Like official, yeah. Rabbi, I like your approach. Like, like uh, when when this rabbi is uh, your your teacher is arguing, let's say uh, with another teacher. So so you you approve your teacher position. Like, uh, what do you like? Who do you think you are? Right. So, but in and without your approval, it's like uh, the rabbi would not know what to do. Like, you understand? <laughs> it's sign to of disrespect. But. Uh, but always remember about uh, the parents. Okay, I mean, it's since like of course parents who do not know they would not take it the disrespect. Other uh, like opposite is true. Like in this generation, maybe parents always uh, like when uh, children agree with them. But uh, but according to halacha, it's sign of disrespect. Okay. So one more time, the whole sentence. One should not side uh, against his teacher opinion. So against, Midler says, okay, you, your little brain has another like uh, uh, different uh, opinion. So just keep quiet. How do you know all of these uh, details? You understand? So even if you if you think that your rabbi misspoke or he said something wrong or, or you do not understand and you know for sure, for sure that he's wrong, 100% he's wrong. Guess what? I know that he's wrong. So don't 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 say like, like don't side against him. Ask him a question. Rabbi, you said such and such. Uh, what did you mean? Like I don't understand. Please give me. Please explain to me. So always always like uh, um, and and not only to a, to to a rabbi, but um, if you know that somebody is a kosher person and he said something, so you there is no problem. Just ask him politely. To provide you with more more information, there is no problem whatsoever. I mean, I do not understand whatever you said. I do not. Why would you say so? Please, please explain me. You said so and so. Did I hear correctly? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was sleeping. Maybe this. Maybe that. Please explain to me. There is absolutely no problem to ask for a clarification. All right, but uh, do not contradict your teacher. Uh, so uh, and uh, the the thing is, I, I would say like I added from uh, just add something else to, for, from uh, myself, uh, my my personal understanding. So I, when you contradict your teacher, so you put yourself on the same level. Yeah, or the colleagues colleagues can can argue. There is no problem. But when you contradict your teacher, so you put yourself on the same level. So I can argue with my teacher. Since when? Right, sixty seven. However, if one um, if one is in different place, or after the teacher's death, uh, one is allowed to voice a different opinion. Uh, not Hilcha Sanhedrin eleven ten, where Rambam states that it is uh, that the uh, that his father held more stringent view, while he himself followed a, le a more lenient uh, perspective. See Ravim Tori twenty eight. It's very interesting. Him and Rambam himself after. His father is uh, passing, so he said, "My my father was do, uh, very stringent, but uh, I found this leniency, right? So I and uh, I would uh, uh, pass him leniently. So in in many cases, uh, uh, all all the stringency is uh, like like no no no. In in some cases, you you're not obligated to do. In some cases, it's uh, it's better to accept on yourself stringency. So it's on case by case basis. 
right? And um, and after death of the teacher, okay, you you can have different opinion, right? Uh, it's not exactly disrespect. Of course, you you don't you don't say that uh, my uh, my teacher Karl Lavigs, but me. Psh, after his passing, I'm number one. I have uh, even better opinion, right? Continue. One should not sit in the presence, uh, his presence, until uh, he tells him to sit, right? So usually uh, rabbis comes come in into the room, so everybody stands up, right? He said, "Please sit down," and everybody sits. So, but uh, but the, the 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 humble person, the humble rabbi, he would come earlier, so before everybody else. You understand? So he would not bother. All the people uh, that, that now he comes in and they need me to stand. Okay. Okay, so 68. The Medrash Rabba, Rus uh, 4 2, makes a similar statement based on Boaz's instruction to the el elders of Bethlehem. Uh, one should not sit in presence until he tells him to sit. Okay, so say, okay, but once ra Rabbi came in, so he said, okay, please sit down, everybody sits, no problem. One should not stand before him until he tells him to stand or until he uh, receives permission to stand. Okay. So what does it mean, 69? Adder Haritz Rabbah, chapter 5 states, A person should not depart from a teacher or a colleague unless he takes leave of him or receives permission from him. So you, you, you cannot just stand up and leave. If it's your teacher, if it's a picoris, uh, you, you, you allowed it, or somebody is uh, speaking Lashon Hara, is be, on today, that's uh, what is expected of you. But if it's your teacher, so you're not allowed to just leave, so you're asking permission to leave, so you need to go, I don't know where, where you need to go, take care of your family, whatever, doctor's appointment, whatever you need, so you ask, preferably before, right, so the teacher knows exactly, so you, you don't have to like announce to everybody else where, where you need to go. Right, so you ask the teacher, can I go? I apologize, I need to, to leave. He said, no problem, please go. See you tomorrow, see you, I don't know when. And there is no problem, you can leave. But you have to ask permission. You, you don't just stand up and go. Continue. When one departs from his teacher, one should not turn his, uh, his back to him. Commentary. For turning one's back to one's teacher is not sign of respect. And same that that's what we do in uh, well, when we leave uh, leave the shul synagogue, right? So at least of, of course you you cannot uh, go all the way back like uh, all the time back. Of course it, that's not what we do. And um, and same actually it's very interesting. Same applies to Western Wall, right in uh, Jerusalem, Wailing Wall. So up to some point. Um, we leave, like uh, we turn our back to, to the wall and uh, uh, like uh, walk normally like to towards the exit but then we turn uh, turn facing the wall and walk backwards I don't know how many feet that's a proper thing to do and uh, same applies to the to the shul as well right you're in a synagogue so at least last four hours at least uh, last uh, seven to eight feet right to turn you, you turn around facing Aaron Kodesh where the Torah are kept, even though it's closed, Ark is closed, everything does not make any difference. Shekinah is there, Godly Presence is there, you, you talk, turn in your face, facing Aaron Kondash, and you back uh, to the door. Okay, same, same with teacher, right? Otherwise, it's, as we said, sign of disrespect. Continue. Um, yeah, go ahead, yes. I'm sorry. No, 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 don't, um, don't be sorry. I mean, I, I'm fine. Go ahead, please. Would that be the same meaning um, when we do the Amidah at the very end, the, taking the steps backwards? That would end up be considered the same thing, or mm, I mean, <laughs> it's same, uh, very similar idea, very similar idea. So we stand in, in in front of the godly presence, right, and we finish praying, and then and then. You, you start walking back, but uh, the halacha is how you start walking back. You start walking back with your left uh, foot, not with your right foot. You Usually, I mean, if you write it, that, that's how you do. You, you do it with the right foot, but not when, when during the Amidah. So you start walk back with your left foot, 
Why? Because you don't want to live. You must stop with your audience with Hashem, right? Because your Amida is over on one hand. On the other hand, you show that I don't want to live. And how I don't want to live? I start walking with my uh, weaker uh, foot, which is the left one. I mean, if you're right. If you write it, so you do opposite. But uh, that's, uh, that's the idea. Yes. So, um, but, but in this case, there, there is no way for you to turn around. I mean, um, you, you're always facing. But it's like similar idea. Respect. Okay. It's a very good question. Uh, um, <laughs> rather, one should walk backwards while facing him. Right, so you in the same same as uh, as we said in the synagogue. So let's see the commentary. Yoma fifty three a relates that um, the Kohanim and Levites would follow this procedure when departed from the temple service. So from temple for sure, there is when godly presence. Yeah, you return uh, your face to the holy of holies, right, and you start backing backing off. Uh, it continues. Um, it continues to. Um, it continues to recommend that the same procedure is adopted by the student uh, when departing from his their teacher. So, since um, right, uh, since this teacher who taught, taught us uh, Torah, he's actually like uh, in some sense it's a messenger of Hashem. So, and if you connect to your teacher in a, in the right way, so Hashem would send you the right information, the right messages through your teacher. He's going to tell you what, what you need to, to hear, right? And, uh, and that's why it's, uh, the secret is it's very beneficial to be a teacher. How is it beneficial? That you're going to learn much more than a regular person, right? As it says the Perkyovos, it says, I learn a lot from my teacher even more from my colleagues, but the most of my learning came from my students. So, okay, from my teacher, of course, of course I learned from my teacher. I, I knew exactly zero, I learned from my teacher. Okay, I, I, it's understandable, logical, right? From I learned from my colleagues. Of, of course, he challenged me, why do you say that? Uh, no, you're not right, Let, let's look into it. And they, you're arguing this and that, and you come up with the truth, uh, the right answer, right? Uh, you. And uh, that's that's how you learn a lot from your car. But how, how from from your students? Right? How much? Like uh, does that make sense? They they know zero or a little, and you teach them, so they benefit. How you benefit? So it said, no, 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 not sure, my friend. Said so the Hashem is going to send them through through you, through you. So otherwise, you would get only your own portion. Of the Torah, whatever is it, individual portion, but because you, these people must learn Torah, so Hashem would send their portions through you. So you, it's like uh, even though you messengers, but you get some, uh, I guess, dividends from that. It's very interesting. Seventy-one. Okay, we finish this halacha. Any questions on what we said? <clears throat> so let me see how long is the next halacha. Oh, it's very long. I'm not sure. It should start. Okay, so let's. Uh, there are many questions. So let's go to the questions. Of, uh, it's, uh, it's very long. So we leave it for the next time. Okay, so let, let's start. Any, any questions on uh, on any topic? Okay, no questions. So, okay, Cheshire, could, could you please read the, the questions because I don't remember them. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, so let's say you and a partner, someone you're partnered with, make a, a, a large donation of any amount of money, sum, right? And could, you, uh, you could, you, could you speak closer to my microphone a little louder because we cannot hear you? A little louder. Yeah. Hear me now? Mm, okay, no, okay, little, little shy. Okay, say it again, please. Let's say you're what? Okay. Your partner? Mm, we cannot hear you. Oh, I, I'm okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now no, no, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so basically my question is, let's say you make a donation and the donation is to cover, um, let's say, you say the prayer for, let's say, anything stolen in the past and whatnot, right? It's kind of like... 
like, you know, like you're, you're trying to make up for things that you either did intentionally or unintentionally, and you want the money to help cover those things. Now, let's say that person who don't... I, I didn't get... I'm oh, sorry. I, I didn't get... It, it was breaking up. So you, you send somebody the, to donation to somebody. So they pray for you so uh, to... To, to get forgiveness for some kind of sins? Well, yeah, let's say, you, you, you know, like you walked out of a grocery store and you took too many napkins from a bathroom. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, yes. Something like that. And, and, and you said the prayer that, you know, that actually would be covered um, with your donation. Now, let's say that person uh, later um, goes back to being a sinner. Uh, they still get credit for the for the for taking the action they made in the donation, or does that get revoked? Okay, I got it. I got it. So it's not uh, it's not a simple question. So let me let let me explain. So let let me just just repeat what what you asked. Maybe I I, I had few few details, but I. I, I think it's a very good question. So, so the, the question is, for example, if a person did the sin. So, well, what is sin? So, let's say he did something and took something from the grocery. Well, well like, for example, a person needed, uh, I don't know what, what he needed, and he by mistake put a tool. He, he was uh, buying, uh, I don't know, dishwasher soap, and he put two, two bottles. So, how much is the bottle? Let's say one dollar. Okay, the, the, this grocery is still in business, don't worry. Right, so the, the question is how to do Teshuva. Is it possible that you can uh, send any organization some money so they pray to, for you, for you, uh, for you Teshuva? So, okay, so, like, well, whatever sin you did, but we, uh, we're talking about sins between men and men. That's uh, that's uh, very important point. So our strategic teachers, and we learn in the Hill has Teshuva, it's actually in this book, but at the end of the book, so um, there, there are two types of sins: sins between us and Hashem, and sins between men and men. Right? So be sins between us and Hashem, you you go to Hashem, you ask him uh, for forgiveness. You, as you said, send send tzedakah and uh, said Hashem, I'm very sorry. Here, I help on you poor people. I ha I help in kiruv. I help in spreading the words of the Torah. Okay, I'm very very sorry. I was uh, was going against you. I didn't keep Shabbos. I did this. Ate not kosher. Dated non Jew. All of these beautiful things. When uh, some people do, okay, no problem. So Hashem would forgive you. There is no problem. But Hashem said, I cannot forgive you for the sins between you and somebody else. It's not Jewish idea. That's uh, that's what Christian do. Like uh, he 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 went with somebody's wife, and he said uh, he came to the to the priest and said uh, that's what I did. He said, okay, it's a very big sin, my son. You have to bring I don't know five thousand dollars minimum for every time you went with this woman. He said, and I forgive. Of course you forgive. What do you, what do you mean? That's uh, that's what they do. But it's not true. That's not what Torah says. So it says uh, Torah says if you. Uh, offended somebody else, you broke his car, you stole uh, whatever from his store, from his property, had something of his property, like, I don't know, whatever was it, and, uh, and and you took it without his permission, so it's stealing. So you have to rectify these sins between this uh, uh, with this person. So you, you cannot, get, for example, you owe this guy a dollar, right, or this groceries. You cannot give dollar to charity, it's not going to help you. It's not. So you have to give uh, to to this uh, to this store a dollar, or uh, yeah. So b between men and men, we have to deal with that person only. Hashem cannot help you, right? Hashem is uh, <laughs> all powerful, but He said here, I'm not going. I I I'm not allowed myself to help that individual. You understand? So uh, no prayers in the world, no tzedakah in the world can help you. To fix this one dollar uh, issue, so I have to go to that person. Of course, uh, I, I think I, I said before, uh, some of my students they were embarrassed. How come it was uh, ten years ago? I was stealing. So the guy was stealing. I don't know, like uh, he was, uh, I don't know, like, not teenagers, like in 17, 18 years old, right? And he was stealing from a register. So they they thought that he's a tzaddik, but he was uh, he was <laughs> still before before. Uh, before we met, right? And uh, so he, he said, I want to do Teshuvah. So I said, uh, let's calculate. 
is it, it took him some 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 time. He calculated. He said it's like I don't know. It was a long time ago, right? So it was like I don't know three hundred dollars, approximately. I said just in case, like add at twenty percent more just just to be sure. Yeah, he said three hundred dollars, uh, like over like summer or, or two summers. I don't remember exactly. The case. So I I, I took the money. Right, I said, give me the money. So I, I, I took the envelope. I said, and the same owner. Yeah, he said the same owner. So I went to this guy, uh, this Indian guy, <laughs> and and I told him that that's what happened. Uh, look, I, since he, he did not know because there are many kids who were working for him, so he wouldn't play employ different like college uh, kids uh, during like all these years. I didn't say what year. Like it did not matter. Like uh, I said, uh, I have a students that that's what happened. He's now religious, we're Jews, this and that. He, the guy was blown blown away with this thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> and I said that this is the $300 and there were people standing around. It was the biggest Kiddush, Kiddush Hashem ever. Right? So and, uh, that's that's how you do. Right? So, sometimes uh, the, there's a dollar, uh, is, if you own a dollar, two dollars, five dollars. So you, you can always come, like I, there's an, another lady, so she's, she's told, I don't know, stockings or something from from the store same the same owner same company so i said uh, come and say i, f I forgot to pay i uh, apologize uh, pre like uh, this is five dollars please, please uh, ring in, in into register and that's it that's it that's i mean very simple to fix but only come between on, on, so, so let me let me finish let me finish and uh, so it's uh, between between us uh, and um and uh, and another man and second part of the question, so let, let me answer. So once person did to Shua, so he felt bad, he, he did everything he, he, he was supposed to. And then let's say, then he fell and did exactly the same, exactly the same. So of course it does not make him hypocrite. You understand? So on, 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 when he was doing to Shua, he was sincere. Five years later, he, uh, he fell again. That's a different story. So it does not mean that original Teshua is uh, is uh, neglected. You understand? It's it is uh, it is accepted hundred percent. Okay, go ahead, please. So my just for clarification, I'm more or less talking about let's say items, let's say things that we stole but we don't know we stole it or forgot we stole it. We can't remember. We can't find okay. the person. Okay. Okay. To return it to. Okay. Rabbi Ruth said that if that's the or if it's a dangerous situation and you can't return the money yeah. or, you know, you have some risk of the government something, yes. that the donation, that if you donate, you can cover it. Yes, now, okay. My, my question is, is once you make that donation, cover it, it can't be taken back if you commit a sin afterwards. Let's say, for example, you do that with the intention to cover it and then you make the donation and then let's say a week later, Bit of sin, but that that sinning after the fact does not remove the positive action that you took to repay the debt, does it? No, 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 no. That does not. It's a two, two separate things. But uh, let me let, let me comment on on the first part. So. Of course, the, the, the exception, of course, I mean, when I went to this grocery, I knew that nobody's going to arrest me, like, uh, or the, the lady went to the first, paid $5 for stockings, like, okay, they, 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 they actually like it, and it was cash, I mean, uh, they did whatever they wanted to do, you understand, but if, uh, if you say, like, uh, if, if somebody did not pay taxes, let's say, now he, I mean, with tax, maybe it's not a good example, so maybe, maybe if you say, uh, I, I don't know what, what, what the law is, don't ask me, I don't know what the law is. So maybe, maybe it's not that bad if you pay taxes. Um, but uh, the thing is, the, the thing is, they, uh, they might start investigation. So if you want to pay uh, $3,000 in taxes, say, so, you know, this guy, if he paid 3000 maybe he owes us 300000 We have to investigate it from, uh, from the day he was born. Understand? Maybe it's too dangerous. They can give you put you to prison uh, because of the some cooked up case, okay, or uh, some other things that uh, would uh, cases uh, dangerous, or it's simply you did not know. So you were um, stock uh, store uh, clerk and you were given a uh, wrong change to people, right? That's unfortunately also happens. So in this case, yes, it is true. So you give to charity to benefit um, to benefit the public. 
right? And when you give this charity uh, money, so it, it, it must be anonymous. So you, you should not derive any any acknowledgement for that. Oh, uh, Mr. So and so uh, donated five thousand dollars. No, 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 anonymous, uh, and it sh should be like cover like as many people as possible. Like I don't know what would be in the olden days would be like a library or something. I don't know some soup kitchen. I don't know whatever some some uh, pu public course, and you pray that this, that this person or descendants of this people or somehow they would uh, derive benefit even remote benefit from from this money. So because it was a long time ago, you don't know. So but those you have, one second you have to understand those are two separate situations. Once you know for sure. Well, who you took it from and as I said the store owner was still the same even uh, I don't know like seven years later so it's one story but if it's like even store owner is different right even let's say it's the same store same brand right? whatever brand is but it's different that it's franchise they already uh, bought and sell it three times so I mean how how by you giving the money to this to this uh, new store owner, like uh, the the old one, does not uh, does not benefit. So in this case, yeah, you go to to put it in public charity. Oh, I would say Kiruf, Kiruf would be the best public charity. So and you praise uh, that uh, that person would uh, benefit. Go ahead. So perhaps I, I have a question. Let's say that you, you you contact the place you want to make the donation to, and they ask if you will send a cashier check or a check. Let's say they ask for the money in a check. Mm -hmm. Does that, if they, if you write them a check, they're gonna know who sent the money. Does that change anything? I mean, um, if if you don't get get like, uh, if uh, I, I, I see what you're saying. So so uh, let let me just explain your question to to everybody else. So we said do it anonymously. So but if these people ask you to 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 write them a check. Cashier check, a personal check. So it's like uh, it's not uh, no longer anonymous. It's your personal name. But if you done, it's still anonymous. If you don't get uh, any credit for it, if, if they're going to put your name in a brochure on their website, this Mister So and So donated five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars. Thank you, Hazaka Baruk. Stuff, stuff like that. That's the problem. That's. Uh, but if it's like uh, normal, like nobody knows what's going on. Yes, so there is no problem. And of course, you cannot. Uh, right off this money of your uh, of your tax return, you understand? You cannot derive so any it's okay. benefit. It's okay. okay if the rabbi knows who you are, just as long as he doesn't put your name on uh, the website for credit for giving the money. Yes, yes. So, so I ask him not. Uh, so you say I, I want this donation to be to, to remain anonymous. So you have to specify it. Yes, because uh, okay. they look they they they. They want to, to, to say that it's, uh, it's such a donor, so everybody send them $18 or $10, and this guy, uh, and you send them 5000 So, I mean, of course they want to advertise that, uh, make all this $10, $10 donation, uh, look, like, like what, you, you give me $10, look, other people uh, give me 5000 what, what are you doing? You understand? So ask, ask this organization. To, I don't want my name to appear anywhere. Of course, they, 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 the organization would see, but they're not going to announce to anybody. That's uh, that's the thing. So it's still anonymous. Okay, I have a question. My, my last question is this. Let's say you're partnered up with someone to give a donation. Let's say you're giving, I don't know, $1,000, mm -hmm. and you partner with someone else. Does that mean each one of you gets credit for the $1,000 given, or do you only get $500 credit because there's two of you? No, no, it's, it's, it's actually, you, you, if, if you partner up, it's, it's a very good question. It's actually, in, in some cases, you, you encourage each, each other to give. And our Talmud says that, uh, uh, that the one who, who gives, uh, who encourage other people to give, get even more reward than the, than the person who, who gave. So you, you understand? So when you give one thousand dollars in the partners, you you gain a reward even more more than uh, for uh, for for a thousand dollars for sure. For for you five hundred, and for his because you encourage him for sure you more getting more absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, no problem. So, Joshua, can can we please go to WhatsApp? There are many questions. Okay. 
Thank you. First question. Um, I can't remember if someone asked this yesterday. No, uh, it, it, it was no, no, it, it was it was from from yesterday. We didn't answer. It was after after the class, I think. Tell me what is the question. Uh, that, that, yeah, that was a question. Do you, do you want me to ask that one? Because that one was at the very uh, end of class, like. What what, what was it? Tell me what was it. Okay, I can't remember if someone asked this yesterday, but I was wondering what if it it was like a Monday or Wednesday, and our fingernails are crooked or jagged or got a hangnail. Is it okay to clip them, or do we have to wait till Friday to clip them? Okay, okay, that that's a good good question. Thank you very much. So the. There's no pr problem to, to clip and uh, fix your nails, like uh, especially for ladies, right? They're very sensitive about the nails, no, guys not, not as much. But uh, yeah, you, you're allowed to, to fix it, like especially if it was broken yeah, before. But uh, if possible, don't, don't cut it like very close. So you can do a little more on uh, Friday night, on a, yeah, Friday afternoon, and say that that's like all the showers. Just leave a little extra. But uh, here it's like emergency fix. And leave it a little extra for a Friday night. Okay. Okay, so pl please uh, let's go to the next question. Um, also, when we get dressed or tie our shoes, we are supposed to do the right side first, but what do we do when we want to change clothes or take a shower? Do we take off from the right side or left side? Okay, that's an amazing question. Okay, so I think we said, uh, I don't know where we said it, but just recently. So the right side uh, takes precedence, right? So takes precedence in all of the meets. So for example, ah, we were saying, how, how do you um, hold the Kiddush cup? Or when we say, Blessing over Birchas Amazon over the cup of wine. You you hold it in the right hand. So right hand, since it's like stronger hand, uh, it's uh, it has um, precedence. So you we always take um, put our clothing uh, for, uh, right hand uh, right side first. So if uh, right uh, man would put uh, right sock on first, right uh, like uh, pants. Right, short, whatever, on the right side, then left side. And same with shoes. But with shoes, it's a little different. So, no, the, the putting on, there is no problem. It's a right, then left. But uh, let's say if you have uh, shoelaces, so if you have to tie the uh, left shoes, left uh, shoe first, then the right one. So the, the simple explanation is because um, uh, we put fill in, the man put fill in on the uh, on the left hand, so that's why. So this, 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 since left hand uh, has this merit to put a strap on on it first, so that's why the left side uh, has this merit to to tie the uh, the shoelaces. And when we untie the shoelaces, we do it exactly opposite. We untie the right shoe, untie the left shoe, and then you remove the left shoes first. So why? As same logic because the right side is more more important right so you, you try to uh, to uh, to keep right side as uh, covered as long as possible so in in our case of the shoes as long as possible I don't know maybe three seconds two seconds but still you show that it's more more respect whatever is still dress is uh, is, um, is is more respectful same when we take out the coat or whatever you take out so you take up left uh, left side then right side always with all of, all of the clothing and when we take shower is uh, it's all, all also also is a, is a president so first you you wash your the most important organ with uh, which you had right you, you you wash your hands and, and it's not because yeah the 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 the, 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 the door is shampoo is going to go down and it's not because because the head is the more most important uh, side and then you go to to the to the hands right to the hands to le right left then legs and then uh, the rest of the body so but right right side get uh, uh, cleanse first for sure 
that's um, you see so so we we can we can serve Hashem everywhere absolutely everywhere right even in the bathroom even uh, in, in when in a place for example in the bathroom you're not allowed to to think the the words of the Torah but still you you can do halachas there's many halachas that you can do okay so everywhere it's a very good question okay what else This one's a pretty long one. Okay, go ahead. If, if someone uh, who was not thinking straight at the time ever made a statement or an oath or an action in the past to someone they loved because they thought it was going to have a positive outcome at that time, but instead it ended up backfiring and it unexpectedly caused great devastation and psychological pain to the person to the point that the person who made that statement or oath realizes what they a mistake and deeply regrets it to the point where it makes them feel sick. But it's too late to make an apology because it's already been, let's say, about 12 years ago or more. Is there any way they can fix it by crying and telling the son to forgive what they've done and asking them to please unbind them from this oath, statement, or action and to give the person they wrongfully, they wrong to peace, happiness, and joy in his or her life? From now on, and to release the pain they caused them, and for it to be banished and replaced with love, peace, and joy in their life from now and going forward. Okay, I, I, I see. So, as, um, as, as, as we said when we were uh, answering the, the previous question, so the, um, the thing between uh, man and man, so I mean, you. you you can cry, but you always you always try to rectify the sin. So if we I offended somebody, so try try to go to that person and ask that person forgiveness. So and my my advice, my approach, even if you not it's not your fault, right? So since like if this person is dear to you, just apologize, right? Uh, even if it's more, more what eighty percent of this. Uh, they, 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 somebody provoke you to say what you said and it's only to 20% of your fault so ch try to apologize that person uh, to, to, to that person try, try, to, uh, try to like say it was so many years please, please forgive me stuff like that I feel bad I cannot sleep because of this I feel bad and uh, many many times I have these uh, things with other students and uh, that's why uh, they did not believe me like how this person is going to forgive I said try like uh, Maybe they, like uh, in in few few cases that person like he did not no, it was she actually she did not even no it was here apologize it was here well, one one case ago the, this person did not even remember what what happened so we had to give them like the whole story I I, I tell this lady don't tell her the story he forgot leave it leave it as it is but she of course uh, not of course but she did not listen to me so she she, she reminded that, that the person the whole story and he did not know. So she, uh, well, what she did to him, you understand? So now he got angry a little, but uh, we were able to calm him down and stuff like that. But uh, but the the only way is to ask that person uh, forgiveness, right? And uh, and the prayer, it's uh, it's a must because uh, when we offend another person, it's uh, you you not only offend him, you uh, offend our Father in heaven because our Father in heaven, Hashem told us how we have to deal with each other. You understand? And if I, let's say, if I offended somebody, so, and Hashem told me not to, and let's say, if, if this person is Apicoris, he goes against Hashem, he's trying to lead other Jews away from Hashem, that's a different story. I should have killed him, right? Not only offended him, but other, like, uh, other people who, who are not going against Hashem and not going, like, uh, not... Uh, don't don't create any hill Hashem. There is no was no reason whatsoever for me to do that. So I, well, of course, I feel regret and I ask Hashem before, of course, before you ask your forgiveness to that person, you must pray for Hashem's assistance. You understand? So the, the, this person would open his heart, your heart, and forgive you. So like from my experience, like only one time the person uh, refused to forgive. But all all other times. Even though they, they seem very impossible, but uh, the other side, as I said, one side did not remember completely, 
but other other side for you for like forgive and get, guess what they, they start crying and say i was waiting for this moment i thought i'm going to die and i never hear these words it's like uh, very like people get very emotional you understand especially when, when they wrong somebody and somebody's from the family pff, between brothers and sisters it's uh on one hand on one hand they hate each other they don't want to see if if she is my sister going to this party i'm not going to there if your family goes there i'm not never going to go there so but uh, once you ask forgiveness so you see you're humble that you feel broken that you want the peace you want only forgiveness so most of the time absolutely majority of the like as i said maybe from my experience i don't have such a big experience but from my experience only one person did not forgive Maybe later they didn't do it. I, I don't know the whole story, but uh, they didn't follow up. I mean, but uh, all other people forgave. I mean, we just, we just found the, the right words and uh, tried to help that person and it helped. Of course, you prayed for a divine assistance. But one more time, Hashem cannot forgive us because of the sins. So that's not Judaism. Absolutely not. We have to go ourselves and ask for forgiveness. And uh, just, uh, just 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 one one more cl clarification. So we must for ask forgiveness three times. If it's normal person, regular person, three times. So in different uh, different uh, settings. So you you ask this person one time forgiveness. He said absolutely not for what you gave did to me 15 years ago. I don't want to see you. I don't want to hear about you. Not about your family. Okay, no problem. So you go to his uncle, you go to his aunt, you go to his friend, this and that, his sister, his wife, or whatever, whatever. You go to that person and ask it, please, ask, uh, like, help me to get forg forgiveness. So you 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 do with one party with three people with whatever. So three times this person said, "I don't want to forgive you." You are clean, you are clean. So there is this, uh, this sin on on that person head because Hashem said you have to be merciful. Somebody ask you for forgiveness. And you see that person is uh, it's sincere. You're not allowed to 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 keep grudge. It's one of the six hundred thirteen command commandments. You're not allowed to keep grudge against that person. You, you must forgive. Must must. Okay, you you you're not sure he is or she sincere. Okay, forgive him from from a second time. You understand? Third time, but that's it. You cannot uh, just not forgive. But after three times, you're clean. In Shemaim, you clean one hundred percent. So it's absolutely worth it. Especially if it's, uh, as, as it's, the question said, 12 years ago. So the person still remembers that it's, uh, it's uh, very painful for, for that person. Sure. Okay. What else? Um, if, if I can add to that, Rabbi. Please, go ahead. Um, so so what, do you, what would you do if you had somebody like that? Um, and you... Um, they, they never come to ask your forgiveness. They never come to ask you um, and, and that person who was hurt or damaged or whatever, you know, is it, uh, is still going through whatever trauma that they're going through. I mean, what, what do you do in a situation like that? And the, the person that did the wrong knows oh, he did oh, the wrong. Oh, sorry, sorry. One second. Let me try to They They did wrong to you? That's what you're asking? No, no. example they did wrong to me mm -hmm. and they knew they did wrong but they've never once tried to apologize or or, or ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. but me myself uh, uh, said in my heart said to mm -hmm. Hashem I, I forgive that person no matter what that's it that's it uh, yes. okay so let me let me answer this question I, I think you had a different question also but I, I want to address this situation that's because it's very, very simple, very, very straightforward, and very, very clear. There is no, no two opinions about it, right? So f first of all, that's uh, if you read the uh, Shema before Shla, Shema Alamita, like uh, Shema before the bed, bedtime. So you must uh, read it every night. You open your siddur and says, Hashem, I forgive you. I, I forgive everybody who wronged me intentionally, non-intentionally in this lifetime, in a, in a previous lifetime. I, I forgive them. And it's only so. Don't think, don't think it's for for because you're such a great uh, righteous person. Even though you are, right? You are when you forgive, but it's for your own benefit, right? Be because if this person is so arrogant, right? So he would not or she would not ask you forgiveness. So meaning what? But Hashem said, "I am true judge." 
right? Right. So, so what what he would do? For example, that person stole money from you, right? He said, uh, uh, I, "I need five thousand dollars from you for a down payment from this house, this and that." Okay, you please, uh, it's my dream, this and that. Okay, and you took all of your savings. That's all you have. You b- borrowed from your sister, gave this uh, person five thousand dollars, and they say, oh, "Look, it did not work. I apologize." I said, okay, but uh, please give me money. I'm not, not, not now. Leave me alone. Not now. I'm under stress and d- distress. So after 20 years, uh, it still did not give you money, right? So if you're not going to forgive that person, Hashem is going to bring you back. Even though you were great tzaddik, the greatest tzaddik ever, you you were you were supposed to go to Ganeiden right, for uh, for ever and ever and ever, for eternally, but because you did not forgive that person, Hashem is going to bring you back, and that per- person also, reincarnation, and he or she was, would uh, like uh, would pay this $5,000. Who needs that? You understand? After after the, this lifetime is over, just go, go get me to my place, and I don't want to deal with that world. You understand? So because of this stupid money, like, who needs that? So when we forgive others, just the bottom line, right? So we're not only doing favor to them, and of course we practice righteousness and mercy, but remember you're doing a favor to yourself, the biggest of favor, because as we said before, all of the money that a person was supposed to get were calculated on Rosh Hashanah, whatever, whatever I'm going to, to get. So, and nobody, nobody can diminish this, uh, this thing. Nobody ever, any like Hashem said, you're going to make out of fifty-five thousand uh, dollars, right? And four hundred and fifty. Nobody, they're going to steal everything from your house. I don't know whatever, whatever God forbid is going to happen. Still, Hashem is going to deliver on His promise. That's that's not uh, even a question. You understand? So if we, uh, this thief, this not honest person, the dishonest person t- took your money like this way. Hashem is going to compensate. It's his business. He promised to, to be sure judge, and we know he is. So okay, don't don't worry about it. You understand? So it's uh, but uh, but it's from us to other people. It's very simple. You forgive them, and that's it. You move on. Of course, that the obligation is on them to apologize before you, right? Because uh, Hashem is not going to forgive that person. You you forgive. The business between him and uh, this person, Hashem, is different. It should not be your your worry. You you should not ask him well, why. don't you ask me forgiveness? You understand? Okay. Did we answer the question, or it was? Uh, I think it was second part. Tell me. No, no, I guess perfect. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to the next question, please. Um, okay, next question. Is there a deeper meaning behind when Abraham and uh, Isaac both pretend that their wives were their sisters because it was repeated? Is it a deeper meaning? Uh, of course, I mean, uh, there are many, many explanations of this, uh, of this uh, <laughs> Being a sister, so and it's uh, it's very very confusing. Why, if Abraham so, uh, had such a great faith in Hashem, how would he say uh, that she's my sister? Like even two times in a row. Like uh, you normal. Why would you, you would do so? Uh, so if, if, uh, especially after it says in the Torah. So uh, he said, now I know that you're such a beautiful person. Yeah, right to 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 the Sarah. And um, and he know that if he knows that they go to the lowest of the lowest uh, place in the world, right? With uh, with uh, adultery is uh, is a standard in that country in Egypt, right? And people uh, swarm me, as uh, Rashi put it, right? They're not like whether they were like dark skin or like uh, like I don't know small like I don't know like midgets. I'm not, I'm not sure what was it, but uh, not. Uh, so comparing to, to Sarah, they were like monkeys, right? Um, so he said it uh, because uh, this tzaddik had the great faith in Hashem that Hashem is going to protect him. How? That's uh, that's Hashem business, but he would um, would would do like a, like a shtadlus, like his efforts in natural way. He did not uh, um, 
in some sense he did not uh, rely on a miracle so i'm, I'm going to to say uh, that she's my sister and one one of the explanations that i heard from uh, rabbi mizrahi shlita a long time ago many years ago it's very interesting so he said that uh, so he, since he would say he, uh, she's my sister i can uh, so I can ask from, from, from another side any amount of money. So I can say, okay, you want to marry my sister, this is no problem, but you have to pay me $10 million. So people, $10 million, pff, I can buy uh, all this, uh, um, many wives for uh, $10 million. So go leave, go away. You understand? So, so that's, uh, that's one, one of the explanations that was his, uh, uh his uh, thing right so the people who would refuse to pay su such a, such amount of money and leave them alone but these uh, egyptians they did not even ask him they just grab uh, siren when you understand so and then in one in, in some sense uh some commentators say it's because of the lack of imuna of uh, abraham they, they say that people are going to kill me on one hand on the other hand uh, we're not allowed to count on miracles. Hashem is going to perform miracles if He wants to, right? But uh, it should not be like uh, uh, we have to like, count that, that I'm going to go to the dangerous place and Hashem is going to protect me. Why? Because I'm such a tzaddik, I learned so much Torah. No, we're not allowed to. If Hashem would want to protect us, He is going to protect. If not, uh, we're going to be counted as, uh, as, as we took our lives, right? If we go to the dangerous place and something happened to us, it's not because Hashem said that uh, this person has to die in this year. No, we put ourselves, if you jump from, from the roof uh, and kill yourself, has for shalom, so the person would be judged as a, as a killer, as a, he killed himself. And so that's a short answer to that question. Okay, so what else? I think it was one more, two more. Two loaves of bread weighing 0.99 ounces slash uh, 28.9 grams. Mm -hmm. Can we wait three minutes to the next loaves to avoid making the mm -hmm. uh, si situation? I'm having breakfast with cream cheese and these loaves of bread that are very light, but this is not for me a meal, just a breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so that's. Uh... That's a good question. So, even if, even though when um, when um, when we say uh, in halachas uh, or brachas class in in, in kitzur shochonor class that uh, you you have to eat your food in um, in a time period of three to four minutes. That's uh, uh, according to all of the opinions. But still, there is opinion that is very lenient, uh, and in case of the need, we can rely on it. So, what is the opinion that you have to eat in the nine minutes? So I would say, so if if person, I mean, we, we don't recommend, but if for whatever reason, whatever reason, person does not have Birchaz Hamazon text with him, right? He's a, has for sure, he's in a place, uh, in a, I don't know, whatever, in a place that he does not have, right? But he has bread. So that there is no problem. So in order not to say Birchaz Hamazon, you eat less than this kizais, less than 28 grams, right? Less, 26, 27 grams. Okay, and... Uh, and then wait nine minutes, and after these nine minutes, you can eat an, another the portion of this bread. So there is no problem. So if you eat that little, uh, you would not need to say Birchaz Hamazon. But it does not count cheese. So if you put on top of cream, cream cheese, that uh, already is going to get a problem. So you would need, you would need to say the blessing, even though it... Um, we need to say, I don't want to overcomplicate it, but uh, the sim I'm trying to, to say basic. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Uh, if you said, uh, if, if, you, if you eat the food, even in combination, we said it was our topic maybe last, no, like maybe a few, few classes before, right? So we, say that, we said that liquids combine with liquids, right? Then solids combine with solids, but solids cannot combine with liquids. So if I say, uh, like, uh, if I drink a little tea, right, L less than Rivis, right, less than this 2.9 ounces, 86 grams, right, uh, and I ate a little piece of uh, bread, so th these things are, 
piece of cake, let's say, these things do not combine. But if I ate a little piece of cake and I ate uh, you know, half a tomato, these uh, things combine and I would, uh, would need to say blessing after blessing. So I, one more time, I don't want to over complicate things. Forget about cream cheese. So if you ate less than 28 grams, wait nine minutes, eat another 28 grams. So, and you do it like that list all day, you would not need to say Birchaz Kamazon, correct. Okay. What else? I think it was one more. Or two more, I don't remember. Okay, Joshua, you're on mute. Uh, I think that was the last one. Oh, the last one? Okay, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I got one more. When, um, when uh, Elazar was uh, going to go get uh, Rivka or Isak, and he was asking Hashem to, uh, to show him, mm -hmm. uh, to specifically ask, he specifically asked, uh, if she comes in water, gives me water and my camels and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. Is that, I, I had the question last year, but I never got around to asking anybody about it. Is that in, in a sense, a way of, because uh, we're not supposed to depend, like you said, on uh, miracles and stuff like that. Is that, is that something that would be um, like testing the shame or something? Exactly, exactly. That's what I was saying. You say, the Talmud say, don't do it. Well, what of this uh, Eliezer service or uh, servant of Abraham did, did okay don't do it uh, Talmud says four, four people did it for two people it was disaster and for two people it was okay so one of the question of disaster what was Gideon maybe, maybe maybe his name was Gideon maybe I'm mistaken with somebody else but technically uh, what was it um uh, he he was a big uh, like general. Well, let's uh, let's call him general, right? And he uh, people ask him to go like uh, to to be our, our like warrior to to to, to lead us into into the war and uh, against the enemies. And he said, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go. And says Hashem, please help me. And uh, and and he he asked Hashem for signs. I think it was him. Maybe I'm mistaken the story. And Hashem gave him all of the signs he wants. He said, if, if, uh, if you want me to go, let this uh, wheat uh, be like uh, wet. Okay, the, the wheat became wet. Like, or was it next day or something? Well, if, if, uh, if you want me to go, let, let this wool this, this do that. Like all of these things, crazy things, unbelievable things. And, and Hashem showed him all of these miracles. Okay, and then I think it was him. Maybe I'm mistaken. Sorry if I'm mistaken, so, but uh, the, the story is correct. Meaning what? That uh, this general said, uh, Hashem, please give me like uh, victory. And if I'm successful, the first thing that's going to come out of the uh, of, of this house when I come in, I'm going to bring a sacrifice. That's it. Okay, he was a rich man, I guess. May have had many cows, uh, goats, and other sheep and other things, right? Chickens. And he comes back from, from with a victory. And who comes out uh, out of his uh, like uh, gates? His daughter. You understand? So, and uh, the Talmud says like it's it's not exactly clear what happened to, to his daughter. So according to, to one opinion, he sacrificed his daughter, right? Uh, even though we will forbid the human sacrifices. On another opinion, that uh, he put her in a tower and closed like, all the access, uh, so only. I guess uh, it's like Sorrent, so the Sorrent lady was allowed to, to go up there and, uh, and she died there like in loneliness. And uh, the, so the Talmud asked the, the, the question, like why did he, like if, if we do some vows, right? So just go to the Talmud Chacham, go to the base Din and said, look, base Din, me, I'm big general, I was stupid. I, I, didn't, I did not know what I was thinking when I was um, making this vow or this promise, like, Kill my daughter? That's not what, not what I meant. I meant maybe cow, maybe goat, maybe bull, maybe ten bulls, like a big victory for Hashem, for his people. That, that's what I meant. I didn't mean to kill my daughter. 
but he never did this. Why? Because he was too arrogant. He said uh, this uh, big uh, novi, this uh, prophet heard what, 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 uh, the situation, and he did not come to me. You understand? So, I, of course, I need help. Of course, I'm not, I'm not supposed to kill my daughter. Right? So, he did not come to me. So, of course, and I'm such a big uh, king, or no, not king, but uh, such a big general, I'm not going to go to the prophet. Like, who, who, who is this guy? Right? He, I don't know. Uh, who, who is here? Who am I? And, okay, so he never went to the prophet to cancel. So, they asked him, prophet, was it Pinchas? I don't remember who was it. I had to ask, uh, but uh, Rabbi, why, like, why don't you go to this guy? He's he's crazy. He's arrogant. Okay, so like, go and uh, just uh, just forgive, uh, like, re remove his sins, uh, his vows, and that's it. Absolve him from the vows. That's the correct expression. And that's it. And let let this poor girl live. Well, what she, did she do? Like, because of the stupidity of his father, he's a boor amaharis. He does not know the halacha. That's he, he just said it. He did not mean it. So and prophet say. Uh, if you have a question, you have to come to Rabbi. You have to show Rabbi respect. But if you're not going to show Rabbi respect, it means that, that uh, Rabbi is nothing to you. So I, I cannot do anything for him. You understand? So only if you respect Rabbi, if you respect based in uh, the, the Jewish court, they, they can do any, something for you. If not, they cannot help you. So we, we don't know actually what happened to, to this uh, girl. So as we said, two times it was uh, successful. This time with the bull, uh, is, uh, with the wheat, well, he got his signs uh, exactly as he wanted, not what Hashem wanted. And two times it was not good. So the one time I gave you, one example I gave, I don't remember from the top of my head, second example, but it, it was another, some kind of disaster. So they say, don't test Hashem. Don't tell him what to do. Understand? So don't, don't learn from Eliezer. He was just lucky. Hashem wanted... To, uh, to to find uh, Rivka uh, for uh, Itzhak, that's exception. Don't don't try it at home, basically. So when, when we ask uh, Hashem uh, whatever we need, so don't don't give him any any details the way you want it to do. So sh sh send me shiduch. Let, let, let's say uh, somebody is uh, um, a lady is uh, is uh, is looking for. Um, for a husband, so she I like this guy and that guy, no, I know only this guy. How do you know this guy is good for you? How do you know? Maybe he he's Mr. Nice outside and maybe he's abusive, like from, from a day one. How do you know? You you don't know. So just ask in general. So Hashem, please send me Shaduch, the right for me, and uh, like bring me on a higher level, stuff like that. So don't give any details, any specifics to Hashem. He knows better. So that's uh, that's the thing. Okay. So and it's all applied to all of us uh, with our daily prayers. So try to say Hashem, do whatever is good for me to bring me closer to you. I agree. Whatever, if God forbid, I, I'm not I'm not telling anybody. If this uh, disease, God forbid, like some pain would get me closer to you, so l let me have that. If some like uh, I don't know this holy lecture. That I'm going to class, I'm going to hear this uh, book that I'm going to read is going to uh, get me closer to you. So just get me closer to you. That's it. That's what we do. Okay. Any other questions? Any topic? <clears throat> okay. No problem. So Baruch Hashem, we do it over time. So please send uh, send send the questions. Don't don't be shy. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's only uh, it's it's a good question so um, 
so the, the question is the general question is what what what's considered to be bread so bread is only uh, the thing that it's baked from the five grains from, from five grains that we call mizoin so it's uh, if I remember correctly it's wheat and barley for sure wheat and barley that's uh, biblical then uh, rye and then uh, uh, that oatmeal and uh, I think millet I think that that's what five uh, five grains but all others millet did you say millet I think so but but we have to check we have to I, I, I never ate, eat this stuff I like um, but oats for sure for for sure were one of them right so we we have to do that double check what was the number five for all other grains like a rice uh, rice bread or cornbread or uh, I don't know as as you said uh, what was it like um, nuts from uh, like uh, they do from uh, what is it uh, <laughs> almonds al almonds flour yeah yeah yeah. They, they, uh, they, 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 yeah the almonds flour so it's not considered to be bread even though it looks like bread but halakhically it's not bread so you say shehako it's like uh, you understand so it's not considered to be bread okay what else you said you have a second question No, but, but oh. you can disconnect. If you don't want to wait, you can disconnect. Hey, it's okay. I'll ask the question another time. Thanks, okay. Rabbi. Okay. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, sorry. All right. No problem. Thank you very much. Good night. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to learn Halachas of Brachas. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay.